Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part two of the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. Hi Jason, my stats are a 225 kg conventional deadlift, 215 kg squat, my bench is stuck at 115 no matter what I do. Uh, height 1.67 meters and my weight 73 kilos and I'm looking to compete in the 74 kilo crafts. Uh, do you think my bench is related to body weight or am I just a pussy? Thanks. No, I mean, looking at your squat and deadlift, you're clearly not just a pussy. So here's what you need to think about. You're at an average height, right? I mean, I'm going to plug this in real quick. But uh, let me run over to calculator while I talk here. And look at your height, all right? You're not at a particularly high body weight, right? You're not at a real high body weight by any means, by any means. So, you know, you're slightly below average height. Okay, so I'm wrong there. I apologize. Slightly below average height. So, here's the thing, though. 73 kg. Do you think you're going to maximize your strength at 73 kg? All right, you're going to compete at the under 74. You're walking around at a lighter weight than the weight class. And I bet you you're not even super lean either, right? With those lifts. So, what do you need to do? I mean, we know that bench press is the most heavily correlated to body weight. Studies have confirmed this at universities, have looked into this. How are you going to get your bench up? You're going to have to eat. You have to gain weight. You have to gain a few kilos. I mean, how else are you going to get your bench up? You're going to have to gain more muscle in your upper body. You're already under the weight class walking around every day without doing a water cut. All right, let's come back over to that. No one competes. No one who's serious about competition. I know people are going to come up with three examples off the top of their head. Let me rephrase that. The vast, overwhelming majority, over 95%, of lifters who care about being competitive do not walk around able to make weight seven days a week. It is not uncommon to be five to eight kg above your weight class year round, right? To just be walking out at that two weeks before the competition, that's normal, that's average. Extremes, 10 kg and they make weight. All right, you're one kg under. Five to eight is normal for a weight class and just cut water. It's normal. All right, you need to gain some muscle. You're not gaining enough muscle to get your bench up. It is that simple. You're gonna have to bulk. And you can cut after if you wanna come back down to, you know, 75 or something. You know, you wanna bulk up to 78. 79 cut back down to 75 you can make water cuts on that so easy it's not even funny to make weight for comp because then you only have to lose 2 kg that's nothing that's child's play it's child's play right you got to gain more muscle brother all right next question if a trained individual consistently resistance trained for five plus years suddenly stops training altogether, aside from starving, being bedridden, or other special situations where you become deathly skinny, how much muscle would they retain long term? I'm assuming one would retain more muscle than they started with regardless of how long they detrained. Is this somewhat correct? Thanks as always for the great information. Uh, if, you, if you're wanting a specific number, nobody can answer that. However, is your assumption correct that they will have more muscle than they started? Yes. Will that person, if they quit training for a decade, have more muscle than they would have had at that same age had they never started training? Absolutely. Even Because they're going to still detrain over the years no matter what. You're going to see a little bit every year. Okay. They're still going to be a lot bigger and a lot stronger than they would have been. Once you have trained and put on real muscle, you are permanently a different organism. Now, not only that, 
there are changes in the muscle tissue that stay even if the muscle atrophies almost completely. Even if you get bedridden. Let's go back to that one. Let's say they got starved or bedridden and they lost all of their gains, 100%. And then they kept them off for five years. And then they start training again. They will gain muscle faster than they did as a noob. Because we retain and what we think causes this with muscle memory is that it increases the number of nuclei in the muscle cells. Long-term training increases them permanently. Actually, so do anabolics. That doesn't go away when the size shrinks. You have the structures and everything in place to very quickly rebuild the muscle, right? Have the structures in place to very quickly rebuild the muscle. This is why there is no such thing as one cycle. This is why once you have cashed in your natty card, for example, you are enhanced for life. Because there will always be some of it that you can get back. And we know, like you can tell from muscle biopsies, by the way, people who've used gear. We have studies on this. We don't even need drug testing. You could just do a muscle biopsy, but then we'd have to kick every athlete out of every sport in the entire world. And it's extremely invasive and uncomfortable. But we can tell. You can tell anyone who used gear for long term. But the same thing with training. You can tell from a muscle biopsy if someone did years of heavy training and then detrained. You can see it in the microscope. So yeah, there are some permanent changes there no matter what. All right, next question and last question of the week. How long does it take for your central nervous system to heal? Scott Mendelson states it can take him one month. Is he capping? I don't know what capping means. Um, all right, and people get angry when you debunk a good coach or a, a good athlete or whatever. All right, just because they say something doesn't mean that they know anything about the biology. All right, central nervous system does not get significantly fatigued from lifting heavy. That is a massive overwhelming myth that has been debunked in the lab. It's complete nonsense. Now, this person asked below, well, if that's the case, then then why do we get beat up and tired from the lifting? Okay, because that's what we're talking about. When people say CNS fatigue, what they mean is they're beat the hell up. Now, we could argue that your CNS is what interprets that because, you know, if you get stabbed in the foot, where do you feel pain? Do you feel pain in your brain or in your foot? You feel it in your brain, right? That's where you feel it, technically. It just interprets it as your foot. So, you know, we could look at it from that perspective, but realistically, why are, why are you beat up? Uh, your muscles have micro tears in them. They have been fatigued, right? This one's obvious, but really heavy lifting. Your bones. Your bones get cracked. Okay, this is a big one. This is why we hurt in a different way when we lift really heavy. Why we hurt in the bones sometimes. Lifting heavy breaks your bones. Not the true break like you're thinking of, but it puts cracks through it. If you do a heavy deadlift, a one rep max deadlift, one rep max bench, whatever, all the bones that took the load, they get little stress cracks all through them, thousands of them. Okay? That beats you up. Your body needs time to heal those things. Right? It needs time to heal those things. Scott Mendelson, I mean, you get over and you bench 700 pounds raw. How much stress do you think you put into the bones of your arms and your shoulder girdle? How much stress did you put into your ligaments and tendons that need to heal? Sometimes while these structures are healing, your, your peripheral nervous system will not fire the muscles as hard so that you don't injure yourself. Okay? Another reason stuff like pre-workouts are really moronically fucking stupid. Oh, I'm tired. I'm not recovered. Let me take a stimulant to push harder. Yeah, you're a brain-dead fucking moron is what you are. Sorry, guys, but I have to say that. person who does that is a brain-dead moron who knows nothing about training or recovery. Little rant over. So let's come back over to that point. Why are you fatigued? It's not your CNS. It's possibly your muscles. Very likely your bones, your tendons, and your ligaments are beat up. And they need to heal. They need to heal. 
the myth that is interpreted of that is, oh, it's my nervous system. No, it's your body. It's the physical structures of your body. That's what's going on. And there is a, isn't a set time frame for that. Different programming actually works completely different on recovery curves. It's how you train, how you eat, how you sleep. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.